on becoming so free that you float through life. As I stand on a mile-long stretch of beach, I look out across the Atlantic. It goes on forever. A few yards from me, I notice a seagull suspended in midair. It's not flying, it's floating on an imperceptible breeze. It looks at me with a tinge of pity, almost as if to say, if only you could experience one moment of what I've experienced all of my life. I ask it about its experiences. It says, it is not able to be expressed in mere words, but I can hover over the ocean waves and know that they cannot touch me. I can fly to heights in which the wind becomes playful and know that I can fly through it. I can see what lies over the horizon and know that it is mine for the taking. I fully realize that my lifespan is but a fraction of yours, but perhaps this is nature's way of giving you time to search for what I have already found. The question that this seagull spawns inside of me is, while we may not be able to fly, is it not possible for us to float, to float through the remainder of the days that we have left on this earth? Possible or not, what's the point in living a life in any other way? For living a life in any other way cannot be called living. One may have a heartbeat, but so does the man who lays comatose on a respirator. It is very seductive to believe that one day life will come to us, that one day we will be free. If you subscribe to this belief, please let me ask you this question. At what point do you decide that you've waited long enough? What are the signs that will tell you whether your belief was correct or incorrect? What milestone or marker will mark the end of this belief experiment? The truth, my friend, is not that life is avoiding you. The truth is that it has been searching for you for decades. But you have been nowhere to be found. It has knocked on the front door, but you were more interested in the back door. It has given you subtle, instinctive insights, which you ignored in exchange for thoughts. It has even tried to create unspeakably painful events in order to get your attention. But you accepted the scars and hoped that the pain wouldn't afflict you again. I don't mean to single you out. You have plenty of company. We are all just as guilty. We are all ignorant in so many ways. I'm here to say to you quietly, succinctly, and gently, that there is a way. Forget all about the things you've done wrong. Forget about the ways you've caused others pain. Forget about the ways you've cursed life and sunk deep into depression and despair. I'm giving you permission to give yourself a blank white slate. I'm suggesting that you begin again and to treat the remainder of your life as the encore of your existence. Let's get you to a place within yourself that will allow you to float through the remainder of your life. If you are sincere and determined, I will get you started. Starting today, begin to see your every human interaction through the lens of freedom. The freedom to speak your heartfelt truth to the person you are speaking to. The things you've always wanted to say but didn't. Treat your profession as an expression of your freedom. For if it is not, it's a job. And I will state emphatically that human beings were not meant to be workers. They were meant to be creators. And the only person who can create is the one who is free. If there are parts of your profession that are binding you, change them. Immediately. If there are parts of your profession that give you strife, it is because you are not insisting upon freedom. Instead, you are hoping that it will come to you if things start to go your way. You must begin to look at your life as if you own it. Own your failures, for they are but experiments. But there is a trap in ownership, and that is the trap of possessing. Own it, and you will carry it in the palm of your hand. Possess it, and it will consume you. Decide precisely where you would like to go, and if this is too difficult, decide precisely where you no longer wish to be. Create, succeed, earn, enjoy. But keep it at arm's length. The only thing to keep in your heart is freedom. Everything else is negotiable. Freedom is only available today, and today is the thing you have ignored for years. You see, sunrise and sunset do not complete one day and give birth to another. There is only one day, and that day sees the sun rise and set thousands of times, 
and it is within this day that you must take hold of your life, because it is slipping through your hands. Freedom is not something that you work toward, it is something you cannot live without. Freedom is not something that you dream of, it is something that you live within. Freedom is not something that will one day come. If it does not come today, I promise you it will never ever come. Whether you are pulling into the driveway, or turning off the lights, or boarding a plane, or putting on your socks, or talking to your children, or pouring a cup of coffee, or arriving at a tournament, or having a business meeting, freedom can be your companion. For this is the gift that nature has given you. And if you are not free in any and all events, no matter how mundane or how important, then you must look squarely at the barrier to that freedom. And as you continue to look squarely at the barrier, that barrier will begin to dissolve. Why should your life be any less free than the seagull who floats over the Atlantic? The day you begin to view your freedom as your living breath is the very day you will begin to float through life. The day that you open your eyes and see freedom in your grasp is the day you will be able to look the seagull in the eye and see your own reflection.